um, artificial hearts in our clinic 10 years ago, the other specialties would come and be intrigued in our hospital. Now it's almost routine, so it's nothing to write home about anymore, but it's fascinating and uh, it's something that's almost getting to an established therapy in most of our centers worldwide. So, and Spain is le leading the, the track here. They are very active in transplantation there. They're one of the leaders in Europe, so thank you for coming and uh, we are very much looking forward to your talk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Eduardo Barge Caballero, and I come from the Hospital Universitario A Coruña. I am presenting this data on behalf of the Spanish heart transplant teams. The focus of our study was a comparison of outcomes after high emergency heart transplantation of patients bridged to this operation with a bad, a ventricular assist device, something like an artificial heart, or with conventional therapy with uh, really inotropes or uh, another more simple devices like an uh, intraortic balloon. And the idea for the study arises because uh, previous uh, studies have shown controversial data about uh, whether uh, patients who reach a high emergency heart transplantation uh, under BAT uh, had really a worse outcome after the operation than patients that reached the transplant with conventional therapy. There were several explanations for these uh, facts. Uh, maybe in these studies, the bad supported patients were uh, worst patients in a worse clinical condition before the transplant. Uh, maybe the patients who reached the transplant with a bad uh, had a more complicated uh, surgery because a higher risk of, risk of bleeding, infection, uh, and the necessity to take out, uh, out the patient for the bad. Maybe uh, heart transplant teams uh, had uh, selected worse donors because the patient w was in a worse clinical condition, or, or, or uh, maybe uh, a bad uh, supposed a higher risk of rejection after uh, the transplant. We compare the outcomes uh, after this kind of high emergency heart transplantation, it's similar to the status uh, UNOS 1A in the States. Of uh, 107 patients who had been supported with short-term short-term bats before the operation, and uh, 597 patients who reached the transplant with conventional therapy. I repeat that conventional therapy uh, is uh, ionotropes, mechanical ventilation, dialysis, uh, and more simple devices than bats, as uh, an IIVP. The setting of the study were uh, 15 Spanish heart transplant uh, hospitals, and uh, before. Uh, 2000 and uh, sorry, between 2000 and 2009. Data for the study were uh, collected from the Spanish Heart Transplant Registry database. This is a uh, annually updated uh, registry. And implanted uh, devices in the BAT group were extracorporeal, extracorporeal continuous flow devices in 49 patients, and paracorporeal pulsatile flow devices in 58. Here you can see the clinical characteristics of both groups. Patients uh, supported with uh, bats were younger and uh, had higher doses of inotropes before the bat were, was implanted. But uh, there were no other uh, really important difference in clinical characteristics and uh, it's interesting, inter <coughs> sorry, interestingly, creatinine, bilirubin, uh, so uh, parameters that <coughs> tell us about uh, and organ function were similar, uh, similar in both groups. It's interest, interesting as well, uh, the donors were similar in both groups. Uh, there were no difference in between them in donor age or uh, in cold ischemia time. And uh, as well, we would like to remark that sur surgical bypass time was uh, quite longer in the bad supported group. Maybe this uh, tell us about a more complicated heart transplant surgery. The summarize of this slide, different, but really the patients were not within, not drastically different. The donors were similar, and longer surgical bypass time in the bad group may be reflecting a more difficult heart transplant surgery. Here we can see the early post-operative outcomes of both groups. In the bad supported group, we saw a major sorry, a higher risk of major bleeding, a higher risk of need for cardiac reoperation during the few days after the transplant, a higher risk of primary grad failure, and a trend to a higher uh, in-hospital mortality. Long-term sur survival in the BAT group was uh, significantly lower than the, 
uh, survivor in the conventional therapy group, and uh, this remains significant, <coughs> statistically significant uh, even after adjusting for multiple potential confounders. Uh, this excess immortality was uh, limited to the first months, uh, postoperative period of the first month of the surgery, but the uh, long-term survivor of one-year survivors uh, after the transplant was similar in both groups. So uh, we can conclude that our results suggest that the necessity for preoperative support with a short-term BAT in patients uh, that are going to a high emergency heart transplantation may impact negatively uh, the long-term survival after the transplant. Uh, this finding seems to be driven by a higher risk of major surgical bleeding, a higher risk of primary gut failure, and a higher postoperative mortality, early postoperative mortality. And according to our experience, we can see or we can say that routine implantation of a shorter bud is not a good option for all patients uh, undergoing a high emergency heart transplantation. Uh, it's evident that if the patient is uh, really doing not well, it, uh, he has um, uh, severe hemodynamic instability. He's not well with the, with the conventional support. We have to put uh, to put, uh, sorry to implant a bat, but uh, it's not, in our opinion, it's not a good uh, option for all patients in this situation. And that's all. Well, thank you for this very, very interesting uh, talk, and it's very intriguing finding. I, I hope you get this. This is patients listed for transplantation, and whether they should or not get a VED is a very critical decision before. And they, when you go, and there are some differences with the U.S. and Europe, when you go to the U.S., you know, they would rather embrace the idea that you rather put a patient on a VED as bitch to transplantation, and you're challenging this view. And I think this is very important, and uh, it's and you have large numbers in Spain, and that's why this is very important information. Any questions? Yes. Yes. Uh, Pulsatile devices uh, were mainly X-Core, burning heart, and uh, Aviomet, those uh, two types of devices. Right. So was there a difference in the survival with that? Ah, okay. And we didn't find uh, a statistically uh, significant difference, but there were a trend to a higher risk of bleeding in Pulsatile devices, really. But there, there were no enough patients in each group to reach a difference. Any more questions from the panel? I think this is very important and maybe uh, we can follow up on that later. I think uh, we have come to an end. It was a very um, interesting insight into what devices do, how they indeed revolutionize therapy in heart failure. This is the cancer of cardiology. This is how our patients finally die. And when we run out of options with drugs, we're happy to embrace everything that comes along. As Henry Kissinger always said, the lack of alternatives clears our mind marvelously. If we don't have alternatives with any more drugs, we try new devices. CRT is landmark therapy already, the vets and the critically ill, the mitra clip we heard about today, we need more trials, this is coming. You learn more about heart failure in the next years. This has once been a Cinderella, I said it in my intro, it's now center stage. It rules cardiology. And I think uh, with that, uh, we are happy to take your questions and don't forget the, uh, the spokesperson will be available as well. And uh, Angelo?